principal here at West, and on this board, you can partially blame me for being here today from the aspects that um, I was probably one of the most anti my OG guys in the in the state, and have been pitching for about ten years on it, and they I think they finally started listening. And I'm one of those that if you're going to complain about a system, you might as well help find a solution to the system. And I think, uh, you know, through a lot of time on the state's part, I think they did a pretty good job coming to a system that when everybody's trained properly and everybody understands how the system works, I think it has the opportunity to be a really powerful and, and positive um, system for us. I will start that by saying the catch-22 with the way the system is and this is not meant, I'm not looking at anybody when I say it, and it's not meant to hurt anybody's feelings, but this system is interdependent upon two different ADs. And the system is only, you know, for those that have coached before, you know, you always talk about you're only as good as your weakest player. Well, this system is that way. You're only as good as your weakest AD. Whoever's not doing their part of what's required with the system can throw the system into an aggravating mess. Okay, so that's why it's important that everybody understand what the system involves and stays up on their end of what's involved with the system. Um, so let me let me ask just so I have an idea of where people are technology-wise. How many people have used Schedule Star before? Felt pretty comfortable with it. How many people have taken the time to really explore Arbiter and, and the functions of how it works, or is this all pretty new? Okay. One of the things that I can tell you about Arbiter, and let me, again, I'll do a lot of prefacing. Today is all about you guys, okay? I'm, I'm available this morning until about 11.15, to be honest, taking a half day going to a golf alley. So uh, I can stay up until 11.15. If at any time you feel like, dude, I'm good, I'm not getting anything new, you're not gonna hurt my feelings if you pack up and leave. This is about you and what you need and that there's things that we're doing or we're covering Again, you're not going to hurt my feelings if, if you feel like you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs. So, um, so understand that. One of the things that I want you to understand with using Arbor is the aspects of, for it to really work in a way that's not going to give yourself ulcers and, and heart attacks, is the initial setup of it needs to be done correctly. Now, what I, I created this back in the, in the, the early, late winter as they started the training pieces because it really helped me in the aspects as I was trying to help out with training. There are three components within the Arbiter that you need to set up in advance. And I'll show you why it impacts setting things up in advance. But ultimately, the three components, the three components that you have to get set up in advance, and everybody's is going to be a little bit different, is your sites, your teams, and your opponents, okay? Those are the three components that you will use on every game that you create. And the reason why I say it will save you time in the end to set those up initially is because if you try to set up a game and you haven't added that opponent yet, you can't set up the game. So you gotta close, close out of that screen, go back to your opponent's screen, add that opponent, close that out, go back and restart and make that new game, okay? so. Again, you can look up here, you can look on your screen. Ultimately, at the top of your screen, on the, uh, the tabs, right below where it says Arbiter, you have Schedule. This is, what you're, this is what they call your dashboard. This is where you can look and see what has already been scheduled. There's some shortcut tools to do things from this screen that we can show you in a little bit, but ultimately, this is basically your homepage dashboard. Students, we're not gonna spend much time on that today. Ultimately, one of the things you've seen from the state is the emails about competitive balance. Uh, the competitive balance piece, I think, is going to impact uh, you guys pretty substantially. Um, so getting the student part of this right is going to be pretty important for you guys. Um, now, the one thing I'm not real clear on, and you, can, you know, this is on Josh, or if you guys don't know yet, it's on Josh to figure out because with Cincinnati Public, you don't have designated attendance zones, that's going to impact how you guys do your tier reporting for the students. So I'm assuming the state's contacting you guys, or you're my, you guys might be contacting the state on how you're actually gonna put them into tiers. Um, 
and that first batch of reporting needs to be done by mid-September. So, yeah. Is there is a tier uh, option available on the student tab yet? Because I went on there the other day and it wasn't. Not on the, uh, to be honest, I don't know yet. We can look at it. Okay. Payments tab, Josh had talked about you guys might be moving towards Arbiter Pay, which we love it, we do it. Um, there's nothing for us to do today with it because you're not set up for Arbiter Pay. So the payments tab, until you're on Arbiter Pay, you don't, we don't have to worry about it today. The nice part of it, um, I can tell you it's easy to use and it'll save you significant time once you're set up for it. So that brings us to our Teams tab, okay? This is where you're setting up the teams that you have in your building. Boys varsity basketball, girls varsity basketball, boys JV basketball. Whatever teams you have, this is where you're going to set it up. Now there are a bunch of defaults that are already in there. If you look at, for example, I'm guessing everybody has on their list boys freshman baseball. Obviously it has the cute baseball icon. The F stands for freshman. Then it gives you the title, how it's in there title wise. Over to the right, you see the calendar. Okay, on my screen it has that we have 48 freshman baseball games that are scheduled. I have last year's schedule in and I have next year's schedule in. If that number is zero and you're not going to use that team, go ahead and delete that team. Okay, and I'll show you how to do the deleting in a little bit. Because uh, you, what you want to do is, you, for me I have 63 teams in here, I cut the two top archery I just used for part of the training. Um, but ultimately you want to limit your teams on your screen to just the teams you have simply to minimize your errors, okay? Uh, we have some people that list it as JV. We have some people that list it as junior varsity. If you have both in there, more than likely something's going to be screwed up at some point. So just try to limit your teams to the teams that are in there. But ultimately, so let's start in setting up your teams. For example, let's go to boys varsity baseball. So if you click on the words boys varsity baseball, it comes up to edit team. Now, you can change these icons, but ultimately this is where you're going to set up your defaults. The nice part about setting up the defaults is when you then go in to schedule a boys varsity baseball game, however you set your defaults is how your uh, screen will come up on your initial setup. So for example, if 90% of your baseball games are at five o'clock, I would set my default at five o'clock. Now, when it comes time that I enter a game, I can change the time to whatever I want. But at least by setting up your team initially, you're setting your time. It's just one less thing you have to do when you, when you put in your game. So the first thing you do is, is you have your location. Well, I'm gonna have to back up because obviously we didn't do that yet. We'll do teams next. The first, first thing is let's click on sites. All right, I apologize. Should have followed my own instruction sheet. Okay, sites are the facilities that you use uh, for your home events. Okay, one of the nice things is probably about 90% of the sites in the state are already in there. All you have to do is select them as some of the places that you play. Um, if I would assume everybody on your sites already, it'll have your home school. Okay, so then the things that you're trying to put in there is you might add golf courses, or if, you're, if you have an off-site location, uh, or your gymnasium. The way you manage your sites is in the upper right-hand corner, there's a green button that says Manage Satellite Sites. So you can click on that, and you, have, you, can, you can sort things. You can, everything is geared around within your database based upon what your home school zip code is, okay? So for me, everything is set up for 45069. I can just put in a name of a location and it's gonna search for that with the way I have it set here within 20 miles of what that location is. Okay, so is there somebody that has an off-campus golf course that they use? We okay. use Avon Fields. Avon Fields, so go ahead and type in Avon Fields. If you type it in, at least on mine, Avon Golf Course comes up. If you want to make that one of your sites, all you have to do is put a check in that box. And now all of a sudden, that will be part of your sites. Okay? You'll want to go through your sites and do this with every one of your locations. 
you want to add uh, golf courses, bowling alleys. Uh, if your baseball team plays, you know, at Prasco, or you know, if you end up, if uh, like for example, last year we played a game down at Great American. I had to add Great American as a site, so when it went up into the system and it would go into our scheduling software, um, our parents knew that we were playing at Great American. So any place that you're going to play as a home site, you want to make part of this page. Yeah. Does this allow us to identify facilities on our campus, like high school gym, junior high gym? We'll do that in another area. Great. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so any questions with sites? And again, this is where it's, yeah. Um, so on our, I don't know if I'm getting ahead, but sub sites, we already had Avon on there. Okay. But is, do we, is it better to set it up as a sub site? Cause we have it as a sub site of our high school. There's no wrong. Okay. If that works for you, that's fine. Okay. Um, so once you get in, and again, this is where it's, it's, it's hard to spend a lot of time on it because everybody in here has different sites. So that's where one of the things, as I, as I talk about, the most critical thing you can do is spend time getting your setup done. I, I think uh, I was telling them, when I did my initial setup, I probably spent four or five hours on it. Now granted, I took my laptop home and I, while I was watching TV, I, I just sat and did it. Because all the, the more information you can preload into it will make it much easier on the back end um, when you're actually entering the events. So once you're done entering your sites, in the bottom right-hand corner, it has, I'm done managing my home sites. Um, okay, so now you have some primary, some home sites. Let me get to... So now I can click on... So now if I click on Lakota, Lakota West, and this goes to what he was talking about with setting up your, sub, your subsites. Obviously I got Lakota West High School, you can change the cute icon that you have with it. Uh, you got your address, your zip code. What's nice about that is the other teams that are coming to you will be able to click and get your directions. But then you can come down and you can set up your satellite sites, okay? A lot of them are already pre-defaulted. Uh, but what you can do is, for example, I can click on Main Gym, and then I, I can I can actually assign sports to that facility. Again, it becomes part of the default when we go in and set up the teams. Okay, so and this is where you can add, you know, you added Avon Field to the subsite, that's fine to do. There's no big deal with that. Um, and again, most of the most of the uh, satellite or yeah, most of the satellite uh, Facilities are defaulted. All you have to do is assign teams to them. Scout, with the sub sites, are you able to go in and say a high school gym versus junior high gym, put a GPS address that's different than your main school address? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. Uh, and then if you need to add a site, in the bottom left hand corner, it just says add another sub site. And that's where you can come in here. You can call it whatever you want. You can change. Uh, the icon with it, and then you can put the sports with it. And you can add as many as you need to. Okay, and again, that's sub-sites within your building site. Okay, any questions with the sites? All right, the next one over to the left, we'll go back to teams now. The, the team, what you're going to do here is this is where you're going to set up your defaults. Your defaults being the location that they play at, the, time, the normal time that they might start their game. Uh, if you have a default that you just know, transportation is on a specific time. If you're going to use a technology for your maintenance or custodians, you could have a setup time that's a default time. You can leave them NAs, which is no big deal, um, but if you have different components that will use this, these are areas where you just save your time entering later by setting them up as defaults. So if I go into boys varsity basketball, first thing I set up is the location. All right, for me, it's at, it's at Lakota West High School and I assigned it to the main gym. So I made that one of my defaults. 
over on the right side, the times. Um, the, the times you got to be real careful with because the system gets real moody. If you get into a situation where you overlap times, you'll get a lot of warnings. So for me, I just call setup time game time because I don't use this for my custodians. I don't use it for my maintenance. Um, I have the setup put on for my freshman game and then it's been set up for the rest of the night. So for the varsity game, I just have the setup at 730. I don't use dismissal times for home or away. Plus we don't get dismissed early anyway. I have my gate game start time at 7.30. We set the game duration at an hour and a half. Game duration matters because of the aspects they have. If, if, you, if you use the game wizard with Schedule Star, um, Arbor's equivalent to that is what they call smart schedule. And it's based upon minutes or hours before or after an existing contest. So that's why it's a game duration tab. And then an approximate cleanup time. The other piece to the left, go back to the left, you have officiating. This is where, and you really want to do this in your team setup, because if you don't do it in your team setup, you're going to have to go back and do it in every single event. So if you use an assigner, this is where you will attach that specific assigner to that team. Okay, if you look, if I click on the arrow, I have, I have a choice between an, assign, an assigning group uh, if I'm going to assign it as a school, if, or if there's no officials for this, you know, obviously tens, we put no officials for this. By, by selecting Arbiter 1 assigning group, it then will pull up the defaults where now I am attaching my assigner to that game, to that team. Okay, you'll need to know what your assigner's number are. Now, if you haven't used your account before, you might not, you're, you might not be linked with your assigners yet. Maybe you are. If you go to your top of your screen, in the middle it has your school name. If you click on that, you can see everybody that's linked to your account. Okay, so if you look at mine, Don Gillespie is our soccer assigner. The important number is to the right, is 107692. Ken Gallo does some assigning for us. Carol Warden does our volleyball. Kevin Niemoller does some lower level basketball and varsity baseball and softball. Then you have my account, and then OHSAA gives you a couple hubs as well. If you do not see your assigners there, you need to email your assigner for them to send you an invite so you can <coughs> link your accounts. Okay? So when you're assigned, so when you come down and you're adding your assigner group and you don't know your assigner's number, you can just click up here, grab the number, scroll down, enter the number in the box, and hit return, and then that assigner will be linked to it. Once you have everything set, then you hit save. That team is set up. So what if there's an assigner down here, but he's not showing it at the top? There, there is a number in with the assigner's name here at the bottom. Then you need to contact him and make and sure make that your sure accounts are connected. Good. But it's good that he's in there. More than likely, he set it up on his end already. Okay. And he just needs to send you an invite so he can pull into yours. Okay. Um, okay, so there's boys varsity basketball. So then I would go in and I would set up my boys... Uh, my boys JV basketball and I go through the same routine I pick my site I set my times I set my my official uh, assigning group and then I hit save and then I go back and I would set up my freshman basketball and again it's the same thing and there, there is some monotony to it the nice part is once you're set up you're done with it unless you have to make a change but so you set up your location, you assign your subsite, you assign your officiating group, and you set up your times. Now, here's one of the nice pieces, and this is the part that is uh, similar to Schedule Star's Game Wizard. So now I know I've already set up my boys varsity basketball, I've set up my boys JV basketball, and I've set up my boys freshman basketball. So now I'm going to go back to my boys varsity basketball. If everybody's in the same boat, that on a boys varsity basketball night, you have a triple header, you're going to want to use what they call smart schedule. Because the nice thing is, you can set it up that I'm going to use, you know, we're going to, I, I have it set up that I use smart schedule for boys varsity basketball. And, and so when I get into boys varsity basketball, I click on smart schedule. And now what I can do is I can link other teams to that varsity schedule. So you can look in this case, I have it set up. I hit, you know, add new, the green button over on the right. And the first thing I did is I added boys freshman basketball. 
and then it asks you three questions. You can do it the day before. You can do it uh, 